Yeah, but it, 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 again, it makes very little sense. So yes, definitely in the 90s, uh, George Soros Open Society Foundation uh, gave money to Eastern Europe, but uh, they also gave money also to the uh, uh, NGOs uh, connected with, I don't know, like choirs or dancing collectives and so on, because no one else was giving any funding there. Uh, our president, uh, Gil Slevitz, he was a you know, Sorosite, uh, but, but uh, he's, uh, so the conservatives like him, so they never talk that he essentially was, you know, a Soros. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's this attempt to discredit the opposition that they don't like. You know, it's, it's basically, it's, it's like, like calling someone stupid or evil. It's a swear word they're throwing around that creates this emotional reaction, you know, this, this external evil. The same with what Trump is doing, you know, these, these external enemies, uh, these Soros external, Sorosites internal enemy. So you're just simply trying to discredit your opposition by saying that they are working for this evil there's a kind of conspiracy uh, theory uh, that, that has been floating around in Latvia for, for uh, essentially two decades uh, now. And uh, I, I can't comment more on this, but, but there have been researchers in Latvia who've, who've looked at this, that initially it didn't exist, and then at one point someone came up with it, and then it spread. So uh, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. and then and there are a lot of these, these, for example, again, about this myth of rise of fascism. Uh, so that March uh, 16th, this Legion Legionnaires Remembrance Day, so up to, I think, 1998, Russia didn't care about it. So it was happening, no talk about fashion bond rise and so on. Then I think it was 1998, Russia decides to politicize this, and Russia starts talking about this day is the day when the fascists, the fascists are marching in Latvia, it's horrible, and so on. So basically politicizing the, the, these, um, well, basically, well, non-issue, <laughs> that's that wasn't a big deal before and that's uh, also what happens uh, so if you look at uh, trump uh, if you look at russia if you look at these kind of values so uh, for, for example in russia uh, these conservative values they were not politicized early on um, until putin did it in the early 2000s i don't know if you, you remember there was a big band in russia tattoo these two lesbian girls uh, they represented russia in eurovision and russia nobody cared about it you know gay you know kind of all these you know the, on the stage in front of kids and that, that, that was not an issue and then russian government decided to politicize these conservative values and now russia has become this beacon of conservative values the same in latvia and the united states uh, essentially kind of kind of people have noticed that they can use uh, specific values to get people kind of rail up against changes, uh, rail up against kind of the, this, this kind of modernity. They can get votes for this. And um, so that's what they're doing. They're trying to create these, uh, in my opinion, non-issues. You know, the Christmas is being stolen in, in, in the United States or in, in Latvia, you know, kind of, kind of the traditional family is being under attack. Uh, yeah, you can use these, these emotional sounding issues uh, to, to get political support. Um, and that's another thing that I... Uh, so we had talked about Trump. Oh, he's uh, kind of... Kind of um, you, thinking about these political calculations, so I can use these authoritarian sentiments or, or, or this, this, this image of chaos around to get votes. And uh, this is a very important thing, that kind of political logic is very, very different from kind of, you know, everyday logic or the formal logic. Political logic is uh, basically how I can get re-elected. I want to stay in power. If you're a politician, that's what you want to do. And that's your primary kind of goal is to be re-elected. And this changes how, how basically you perceive the world and then kind of, kind of, kind of your, your agenda. Uh, if you want your, your primary goal is to be elected, so you look at your uh, constituents, your electorate, so what is, what is going to get me elected? And uh, for Democrats, they can't do these things that Trump has done. For Trump, if the surveys show that these authoritarian tendencies might work, uh, yeah, why not? Why not use it? If you are a very cynical, very ruthless uh, political candidate, um, there are no rules. You can do whatever you want if it, can, if it is going to get you re-elected. Well, we can see that Trump's strategy uh, hasn't worked. Uh, so Trump's, uh, and why I'm saying it hasn't worked, that, uh, well, Trump lost the election in uh, 2016, the popular vote. Yes, he was elected, but he didn't get the majority of votes. Now, in 2018, Republicans lost the lower house with Trump as the president. Now, <laughs> Republicans, well, in 2020, Trump was impeached. Trump lost the election in 2020. Now, in 2021, uh, um, the Republicans lost the Senate, and Trump is impeached again. So Trump's strategy, although very polarizing, very, very kind of crazy, very sensationalist, has not worked. Republicans have lost with Trump as a president. Uh, yes, society is divided. U.S. is essentially a very chaotic pol political situation, very problematic kind of foreign policy, but uh, Trump's strategy has been a disaster. If you look at the uh, Republican Party, if you look at his achievements uh, in the office, so Republicans who controlled the presidency, both houses, 
control nothing now in uh, well not nothing <laughs> I'm not I'm exaggerating but uh, but uh, so yeah there definitely been um, so the strategy hasn't um, delivered uh, what what um, well what is the, the goal of any party or politician stay in power 